Now I will tell you about the technology in the eye and the ear. Before passing on the subject of the eye, let us briefly answer the question of how we see. Light rays coming from an object and fall oppositely on the retina of the eye. Here these light rays are transmitted into electric signals by cells and they reach a tiny spot at the back of the brain called center of vision. These electric signals are perceived in the center of the brain as an image after a series of processes. With this technical background, let us do some thinking. The brain is insulated from light. That means that the inside of the brain is solid dark and light does not reach the location where the brain is situated. The place called the center of vision is also solid dark. It may even be the darkest place you have ever known. However, you observe a luminous bright world in the pitch darkness. The image formed in the eye is so sharp and distinct that even the technology of the 20th century has not been able to attain it. For instance, lift your head and look around you. Have you ever seen such a sharp and distinct image as this one at any other place? Even the most developed television screen produced by the greatest producer in the world cannot provide such a sharp image for you. This is a three-dimensional, colored and extremely sharp image. Moreover, the screen shows you a two-dimensional image, whereas with your eyes you watch a three-dimensional perspective having depth. When you look carefully, you will see that there is a blurring in the television. Is there no blurring in your vision? Surely there is not. Evolutionists claim that the mechanism producing this sharp and distinct image has been formed by chance. Now, if somebody told you that the television in your room was formed as a result of chance, that all its atoms just happen to come together and make up this device, what would you think? How can atoms do what thousands of people cannot? If a device producing a more primitive image than the eye could not have been formed by chance, then it's very evident that the eye and the image seen by the eye could not have been formed by chance. It requires a much more detailed and miraculous plan than the one in the TV. The plan and the creation of the image as distinct as sharp as this one belongs to Allah who has power over all things. The same situation applies to the ear. The outer ear picks up the available sounds by oracle and directs them to the middle ear. The middle ear transmits the sound vibrations by intensifying them. The inner ear sends these vibrations to the brain by translating them into electric signals. Just as with the eye, the act of hearing finalizes in the center of hearing in the brain. The situation in the eye is also true for the ear. That is, the brain is insulated from sound just like it's from light. It does not let any sound in. No matter how noisy is the outside, the inside of the brain is completely silent. Let us again compare the high quality and superior technology present in the ear and the brain with the technology produced by the human beings. As is the case with imagery, the cast of effort has been spent in trying to generate and reproduce a sound that is faithful to the original. Despite all this technology and the thousands of engineers and experts who have been working in this endeavor, no sound has yet been obtained that has the same sharpness and clarity as the sound pursued by the ear. Think of the highest quality hi-fi systems produced by the greatest producer in the music industry. Even in these devices, when sound is recorded, some of it's lost, and when you turn on the hi-fi, you always hear a hissing sound before the music starts. A human ear never perceives a sound accompanied by hissing sound or the atmospherics as hi-fi does. It perceives the sounds exactly as it is, sharp and clear. This is the way it has been since the creation of the man. Briefly, the technology in our body is far superior to the technology mankind has produced using its accumulated information, experiences and opportunities. No one would say that a hi-fi or a camera came into being as a result of chance. So, how can it be claimed that the technologies that exist in the human body, which are superior even to this, could have come into being as a result of a chain of coincidences called evolution? It's evident that the eye, the ear, and indeed all the other parts of the human body are a product of a very superior creation. These are crystal clear indications of Allah's unique and unmatched creation of His eternal knowledge and might. The reason we specifically mention the sense of seeing and hearing, here is the inability of the evolutionists to understand evidence of creation is so clear as this. If one day you ask an evolutionist to explain to you how this excellent structure and technology became possible in the eye and the ear, you will see that he will not able to give you any reasonable or logical reply. Even Darwin in his letter to S.A. Gray on April 3, 1860, he wrote that the thought of the eye made him cold all over and he confessed the desperation of the evolutionists in the face of the excellent creation of living things.